Welcome, it's Paul here and welcome to my new channel that looks into Linux made easy. With the death of Windows 10 coming soon in October, many people will be looking to the future and what operating system they will like to use. I've been using computers since, I don't know, the late 1970s and I've used many operating systems. From the early days of DOS and Unix, I've used early Mac OS to the more recent Mac OS Xs. I have used Windows from the early days of 3.1 all the way through to Windows 11. I've even used Chrome OS on Chromebooks and uh, tried to squeeze it onto other computers with Fide OS and Brunch, um, which was very interesting. I've dabbled in Linux for the last 20 years, but not really pushed myself fully into it. Now, I'm happy to open command prompts or PowerShells or even the terminal to enter command, but this really isn't for everyone and it really isn't what we should be looking at for a modern operating system. So what I'm going to look at in this video and in the following videos over the next few weeks, months, is how I'm going to choose my next OS for the future. And in the following videos, I will show you how to use it with open, without opening a command prompt or a terminal or anything at any time. I'm going to try and make it as easy as possible. It's either going to be looking in stores, on the internet, or, or well, it's just no way am I going to use any of the command prompts. And I'm hoping that if you follow me, it might tempt you into trying going into Linux. Coming to the end of the time of Windows 10. What do we do next? I mean, Windows 10, it's still got the messy start menu, having to try and find stuff, looking through folders, if you're not sure of its name. Um, but it's what we're used to. I think uh, from Windows 8, I find that the uh, start menu was uh, getting very dated and looked at, at other operating systems back then to think, well, maybe there's something out there that's better. But Windows 10, it's like the standard. It's where your games work, your office programs work. It's what you're used to, isn't it? However, it's coming to an end, which means we're going to have to switch over to another operating system. Well, there's more than just um, Windows to choose from. Obviously, with the later windows, we now find adverts everywhere and eh, a bit of a mess of how it looks. Windows 11 then, even messier. However, all your software that you've used in the past is going to work. Looking for things becomes even harder with the menu, a sort of a mix between the start menu and, uh, well, it's just a real mess. Horrible to use don't like it in the slightest. People move it to the left, but even when you've moved it to your left, you end up having to search for things. It's a complete disaster. Even though I love Windows, I just think it's time to try something different. I've been using different operating systems for a while, as I've said, but it's time to try and see if anything can make this oh, absolute disaster of a a way of finding stuff. I mean, just look at it. It is a complete mess. Your desktop ends up a mess because you start putting shortcuts on there and looking for stuff, constantly having to search. So what else is there out there? What can we do in October? Well, one thing that's out there is a MacBook. You could buy yourself a MacBook if you're a millionaire. I mean, there's some great software for them, but it's just not Windows. It's like you're locked into their system and locked into the whole of the Apple ecosystem. And again, it doesn't last forever. You end up having to dump your old MacBook for a new one, which is not the way I think you should be doing things. It's just a shame that you can't keep them going for years and years. Many old MacBooks now have things like uh, Linux on them to try and replace what the operating system that doesn't work on them anymore. It's like the iPads. 
after a few years, you're having to buy a new one. And they're so, so expensive. Then there's the alternative of what I sort of like is the Chromebook. I have a Chromebook myself. I use it mainly for streaming things. It's very good and very nippy and good on battery life for um, just watching things on the internet. But anything outside the internet, then it becomes difficult if you want to start um, uh, basically putting any software on. You're going to be looking at uh, Linux again, but it's all command prompts, command prompt here. All right. But again, I, I quite like the way they set out all the icons. It, it, it's, it seems nicer than uh, Windows, but it's just so limited. I use my phone. Uh, it, well, it's very much like a phone. I use it very much like uh, I'm going to um, use my phone. I use it when I'm away from home, say, uh, and I need something that will last and I can watch uh, a movie or something like that. Then there's Linux, Ubuntu, Ubuntu, absolutely wonderful. It's like, I think it's absolutely gorgeous. Based on Debian, I would not in a million years use Debian. Why not? Because it's just too difficult, too many command prompts. Uh, Ubuntu, on the other hand, is a real step up. The only thing that's really letting it down, I believe, is snap packages not having built-in flat packages because it just makes it a little more difficult because it doesn't contain all the things that you want it, you have to be looking on the internet on how to do a little bit of um, command prompts to try and install stuff it just it's a shame and it comes in lovely flavors as well uh, there's kubuntu there's lubuntu which are lighter versions of Ubuntu, but the known version is just absolutely stunning. I absolutely adore it, but I would not, which is just shame, recommend it for beginners. But anything based on Ubuntu and Debian, that's where we, we start to see a great improvement. Okay, if we look at just Ubuntu, when we try and search for things, I mean, it's just, I don't know, it's, it, I find it absolutely glorious. I mean, look, it's it's very much like the app drawer you get on Chromebooks and MacBooks, but you can put things into folders and and sort them and move them about. Um, but it just it's a, it's a pleasure using. It's it's I'm just really am shocked that they don't easily have flat packs without having to go to the command prompt to install this sort of stuff. Um, so it's a shame I can't recommend it. I mean Kubuntu here, look. It's um, another version, a lot lighter, very much uh, in the vein of um, the window style of um, start menu. But again, I'd be uh, hard pressed to say that I would recommend this to anybody. So what's the alternative then? Can we go to Linux? Well, there's many uh, um, operating systems based on Ubuntu that are, I think are fantastic. There's Linux Mint. Uh, I think this is a very beautiful, a very beautiful distro. However, it's it, it's like they're, they're stuck with this uh, start menu system, which uh, I'm trying to move away from. However, I think with the fact that it's got um, flat packs built in, it's just, it makes it so much better than Ubuntu. The flat pack is just a superior way of installing software. On Ubuntu, they have snaps. Now, snaps are fine, but they're limited. A lot of people say, well, with the flat packs and the snaps, they're large, they're, they're a bit slower, but it just makes the whole operating system a lot easier to use. So what else is there? Well, apart from Mint, there's many other distros, but Mint is just one of those ones that I'm going to trial over the next few weeks, seeing if I can do everything without using any command prompts whatsoever. This is uh, what I've got on my uh, a really, really small old laptop. The old laptop is um, only got 32 gigabyte of um, space on it, and it has uh, only two gigabytes of RAM. Um, so, I mean, 
for it to operate a, uh, an operating system to this standard is brilliant. It came with uh, Windows 10 on it, but it never fitted on. You could never update. But now I've got a whole operating system. I can do almost everything on it. Uh, it's just a very slow machine. I originally put a Pop! OS on it, but Pop! OS just would not install and it was a bit slow. But it really, you know, it's amazing what you can get on such a, a small old computer. The next one I, I might recommend, which I've never ever used, but I'm going to try and include in my videos over the next few weeks, is Zorin OS. Now, I know with uh, Mint and Pop, I can get away without using that command line at any time. But Zorin OS, I have no idea. But uh, it's uh, advertised as being really simple. So I thought I'd trial all the ways of running different software on um, Linux on Zorin as well. What I'd like to be able to do is show that you can do word processing, gaming, um, emulating um, all sorts over the, the next few weeks all without using a single command prompt because in Windows how often do you use the uh, command prompt or the uh, terminal you do not you don't open the PowerShell and I think that's what any operating system should be like this is the next one is one that I've used quite a lot in fact it's the one I've got on this computer I've got now which is a 20 year old Beats PC, the one that I'm going to be trialing out all these different things by uh, doing three virtual machines, one for Pop! OS, one for Zorin and one for Mint. But I think this is a, just a great operating system. It's it's GNOME, very much like <coughs> Ubuntu GNOME. So it's more for your, well, I wouldn't say high-end machines because this is an old 20-year-old machine. But you can't get away with a very slow processor as such. But it's still great. Um, and searching for stuff, I mean, again, it's it's so easy. I mean, it, everything comes in folders. I don't think it's as quite as pretty as the latest uh, Ubuntu's. But Pop! OS is absolutely fantastic. And I think when they get bring out their own uh, cosmic desktop, on the next one it could be just the the beta of all i'm just hoping that it, it's as good as i think it would be and this is one i would highly recommend why not try and follow me over the next few weeks to try and find out which is the best